So in the test running I've been doing, I've found that this point here doesn't always have a good electrical contact. So I get a fair amount of stalling of locos going over it. That's not something I want to be dealing with. So what I'm going to do is install a point motor that has a frog switch so that when the point switches, this frog here will get the power directly rather than just relying on the blades. With the pre-installed point, it's not always easy to get the motor in place and to get the whole holes ready, especially once it's been ballasted. Ideally, you'd have drilled holes already. Now, I've obviously not done this, so I'm going to show you quickly what I will do to enable the point motor to be mounted. The first thing I'm going to do is move the point so that it's all the way across and I can see where I want to have the point motor going. I've got more ballast on this side than this side, so I'm going to put the point motor going through this side. So with my small drill, I'm going to just drill through the hole which the tie bar's got on it, both at the top and in the second position. And this will show me the limit of the travel of the point. I can then rotate the baseboard round and I can drill out more holes from the underside, being very careful not to go all the way through and disturb the point. So the drilling through, I carefully marked to drill just to get an idea as how far it was going through. If I drilled beyond the black, I knew I was going to go into the track work already. So I didn't want to do that, so a bit of marking. The marker will soon come off the drill um, when it's cleaned. So I've turned the board over and I've found where the two holes that I've already drilled have come out. I've now put my drill bit back in my small drill and I'm very carefully drilling in to the board, making sure I don't go beyond the mark that I put on the drill, so I'm not going too far through, so that I get two points which are easier to see that provide me with a base marker. So we're doing that now, on, and we'll do it on both of the holes, so that we've got that marker of the top and bottom as the length of trap. This isn't a final solution because it will show that I need to extend the hole beyond these to allow a little bit of room for the bar to travel. I now take a knife and cut through around where those holes are to create the full hole and as can be seen I can now move the point bar and see the hole of the, throughout its full travel. So the point motors I'm going to use for my test track are some old Minix microdrive point motors. I was very lucky a few months ago that I managed to get hold of a box full of these free of charge where someone had stripped them off an old layout and just wanted to get rid of them. Um, I have them on my main layout but the company stopped uh, trading several years ago now which is very sad as the system worked well for me particularly as I was looking for very small point motors to go in a very limited space. The first thing I wanted to do was make sure that the drive unit was working so I just temporarily wired it into an AC power source as you can see, the lights have all lit up. It's functioning as it should do. The cable's very short, so it's slightly awkward to actually getting in there, but it did work for the purposes of testing. The next thing the instructions suggest is plugging in the drive unit that you want to use. These are nice, simple plugs. You can't really get them wrong. And then you plug it into the point motor itself. 
I was just trying to wire it under the controller so it would keep it flat. So you pop it in, there'll be a brief light up and you can see the other lights working to show that everything is as it should be. The next thing to do is just check it works. So I put it on to move to make sure it was on move. Actually, I'll put it on calibrate and asked it to change and it changed. So that was good news there. And then we ask it to center. What I didn't realize is that I needed to actually put it into the middle point, oh sorry, onto the move point to get it to center before doing anything else. So we will shortly change it across to the center the move and then we can center it. Now it's centered, I can fit the point motor. The first thing I needed to do when fitting the point motor was actually get the actuator bar to the right angle. So I did a quick bit of measuring to make sure that it would go through the point motor um, connector and up through the track bed itself before then just bending it very simply. And apparently with these point motors it's really important that everything is parallel. So we're now onto the proper fitment of the motor. The actuator bars through the point tie rod. We've now put it through the point motor itself. I haven't tightened the screw on the point motor yet because I want it relatively loose to start with. And now it's just a case of screwing it in place. There are three screw holes to just drill out fractionally first before getting the screws in. I always do try and pre-drill the holes, it just makes things a lot easier for the fitment. Obviously the drilling and screwing is not the world's most interesting thing, but we've speeded it up slightly here so that we don't have to sit and watch it for an eternity. But as can be seen, these motors are actually really, really simple to fit. We can just move it to get it fitted. the second screw in and we're all secure once the third screw is now gone in. Once the three screws are in place it's simply a matter of just tightening up the actuator bar screw and we're away and running. The cable's now in place and you can see the point motor is working. You can see it from the bottom here. And then if we turn the board over, you can see the point motor working successfully and operating the point itself. So the next job for me is to drill a hole next to the bit of track that's attached to the frog. This bit of track is part of the isolated section. I'll make the hole big enough to take the wire that goes through. As you can see I used a drill and a small file to do that. I wanted to make the hole as tight a fit as possible for the wire. The next thing we're going to do is just tin the wires. Um, I've used the 
hole that I've created to tin the wires, it holds it in place for me and makes it easier. Um, it also has allowed me to check that I've made the wire hole just the right size. Once that's in place, I've already cleaned a bit of the rail and we'll just put the solder and just put a little bit of solder where I've tinned it, or sorry, where I've cleaned it to make it so that the wire can be soldered on with ease. So in this case, I thread the wire back through and then make sure it's in about the right place. Sorry, my hand got in the way a bit there and solder it together. I've used the back of a teaspoon just to hold it in place just to save my fingers. And there we have a dropper ready for the frog feed. As part of the electrical work that I've been doing for the rest of the layout, I've also decided I'll add a couple more droppers in just to ensure that I get a good power supply throughout the entire circuit. It's not essential, but it's something that I'm going to do in this case, as I say, just to make sure that we're all there and everything is going to work as it should do reliably every time. So to do this, the first thing I'm going to do is just remove a little bit of the paint I put on. I'm going to choose places that are fairly inotrusive. So in this case, this will be right under the bridge, so the chance of it being seen is very slim. So first thing I'm going to do, just get a tiny file and remove a little bit of the paint. And that's the paint gone. And then we'll get a drill, only a small drill and we will go right through the baseboard. So, the next thing I needed to do was wire some droppers in. This was a case of simply just cutting some small bits of wire, tinning both ends of the wire, dropping them through the holes which I've created, and then soldering them onto the um, track. Once they were soldered onto the track, I put a bus wire around, so a thicker gauge length of wire, to, cow to carry the track power around the entire layout, and the droppers were then soldered onto that. The final bit of wiring that I needed to do was to add the wires that will travel from the main bus to the frogs. Um, on the um, point sort of decoder unit. This is very similar to the way which I did the other droppers, but instead of having to go above a um, baseboard, they all travel underneath it. So we've got the dropper cables. In this case, because it's below the board, I'm able to use much thicker cables. And we're just attaching them to the main bus. To save solder points on the main bus, I've attached the two cables together for both sides of the um, frogs on both points. As you can see, I always splay the joint. It reduces the chance of an accidental contact happening. What I will be doing in a little while is actually getting some self-adhesive clips to allow me to clip the frog wiring into place around the board, save it flapping about all loose. And then it's just a case of putting those frog wires all together into the drive unit. And it's up and running at that point. So, as can be seen, the wiring's now complete and the loco will go across the points 
I can now run the loco in either direction and remotely operate the points. The additional time taken to do the wiring has eaten into the time I had available for building this layout, but I think it's worthwhile in the long run. The point controller is just in a temporary position at the moment, and the next episode we should see us moving the point controller across to its final position and starting some of the scenery. Look for that um, coming within the next couple of weeks and I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please remember to like and subscribe to this video if you have enjoyed it.